CDC's outline on surviving the zombie apocalypse is making its round again. And people are associating pop culture with reality and thinking this is the first time the CDC has ever mentioned zombie apocalypse when it's been on their page, I want to say for some years now. What they are conditioning you for is not to survive a bunch of people who may have been struck with a viral infection that wants to go around cannibalizing everybody. What they are conditioning you for is all out mass hysteria. Well, in case you missed it, the CDC is giving official sanctioned advice on how to survive a zombie apocalypse. This after online predictions say that 2021 is the year it could happen. What? And of course, the internet is always right. Health experts say having emergency supplies, a plan of where to meet in case uh, zombies overrun your town, and an evacuation plan, they're all important. Now these tips started coming in tongue in cheek as a joke, but the CDC says it's actually a great conversation starter about preparing for any time type of crisis in general. And I guess that gets to the point, Tom. You just did that great presentation about being ready in case of a tornado. Um, whatever gets that conversation started, right? Well, or any type of uh, bad weather that's coming your way. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Just be prepared. Know what you need to have. A checklist. Have I got this, 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 and this? Uh, as for the zombies, I, you know, I'm not... not now, all the zombie movies that I've ever seen, they always, they, they, it's always the bacteria and the viruses that always get them. And I don't know if I like the CDC selling that advice at this point, but the, the, hopefully they stayed away from that kind of thing. But uh, uh, do you have an evacuation plan? Kind of person who strategizes about how to survive the walking dead this could be <laughs> crucial life-saving information researchers have rated the best and worst cities in the case of zombie apocalypse economic modeling specialists international ranked cities on their ability to defend against a zombie attack stockpiling food containing zombies finding a cure and if you live in new york city hate to be the bearer of bad news but you're toast the city got the worst rating, followed by Tampa, Los Angeles, Riverside, and San Bernardino, California. Southern California really stinks. And Chicago, so the nation's three biggest cities, right? Best place to be? Boston. The city was rated as the place you most likely would survive. Other contenders here, Salt Lake City, Columbus, Ohio, Baltimore, Virginia Beach, and Norfolk, Virginia. But, I, you know, I just have a problem with this, right? Here I live in New York City, and I will admit that Manhattan may not be the best place to survive a zombie apocalypse. Number one, the food is going to go really fast. Number two, they can climb stairs. And as everyone knows, your buildings go up really high. But think if you live in Brooklyn, also part of New York City or Staten Island, you could contain the threat to Manhattan and still have lots of farmland to grow food. I think if you live in Brooklyn, you'll be just fine. I'm not a scientist. Silver. I'm here from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm here today to talk about zombies. I know a lot of people wonder why CDC would ever be talking about zombies, but we've actually used that as a really great tool to talk to the public about emergency preparedness and how a zombie apocalypse is really just like any other emergency and what they can do to prepare. Well, I'm going to be going over the genesis of our campaign, sort of how we came up with this idea to use zombies as a a public health teaching tool, how we launched the campaign with social media, and then what the after effects of it have been and what we've seen come out of it.
The great thing is that a lot of other people have been using zombies to teach about emergency preparedness, but then a lot of other groups have been going outside the box and using these pop culture references to use in their own public health campaigns. So we think that's really great. Zombies are a hit with the teenagers, and we get tons of comments on our blog about moms saying they've always been trying to teach their families about this, their boys, and their teenagers, and now they actually want to listen because it's about zombies, something that they're interested in. Preparing for an emergency is always important. Um, we really want people to understand that they need to have an emergency kit, an emergency plan, and know what to do when disaster strikes. And if it takes zombies to talk about that, then we're fine with it. Hi, my name's Diana. And I'm Ellen. We're with the Office of Public Health Preparedness and Response here at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. A few months ago, CDC posted a blog with instructions on how to prepare for a zombie apocalypse and real emergencies like earthquakes, floods, and hurricanes. We got such a great response, we want to see what you learned. September is National Preparedness Month, and now we're asking you to help us educate the public on emergency preparedness by entering our video contest. Every year, disasters disrupt thousands of lives. These threats are ever-present, yet many people don't prepare for them. What we want to know is, how are you prepared? Although organizations like the CDC will help during a public health emergency, you need to be ready to help protect yourself, your family, and your community. The scientific community believes a zombie plague is unlikely to happen. But there is one man in the city of Los Angeles who studies zombies as if they were a scientific reality. There are so many similarities to a zombie outbreak as to um, the disasters that we see every day on the news. So whether it's a giant hurricane or a flood or an earthquake in Los Angeles, the survival techniques you need and the issues that you face are the same. Matt Moak is the founder of the Zombie Research Society, a collection of academics and enthusiasts. They use the idea of a zombie apocalypse as a metaphor for any man-made or natural disaster. They use the idea of a zombie apocalypse as a metaphor for any man-made or natural disaster. He heads to the mountains that surround Los Angeles to plot out his survival strategies should a zombie plague ever occur. As you can see, Los Angeles proper is down below us. In a zombie outbreak, services would go down, traffic would be a complete gridlock, and no one down there, the millions of people, would be able to make it even this far outside of the city. In a zombie outbreak, you want to have a 72-hour kit which is your bug out bag. You start with a tent for your shelter. You've got some food. So these are uh, ER bars. They're energy, essentially nutrition blocks that give you all the nutrition you need. You need your first aid kit. And then I always like to have uh, a pair of binoculars so I can sort of stay low and see what's going on. You actually need a bug out bag for your car, you need one for your home, potentially you need one in your office. If the zombie pl plague hits when you're at work, you may not be able to get home, you may not be able to get to your car, and you need to be able to survive for at least 72 hours and worry about your own safety. There's no way that you can mount a successful defense if you don't handle the basics first. The best way to get out of any city in a zombie outbreak is to take, essentially, the road less traveled. If you think going to Walmart is a good idea to get all your stash, think, will everyone else want to do the same thing? And if that's the case, do not do it. What he's talking about is not a plague that'll have you going around eating other people's brains. He's talking about the plague of the mind, that people will not think logically in these situations. In order for a great reset to happen, what are they priming you for? What are they conditioning you with? Federal Reserve blackout, the COVID vaccine, food shortages, and power outages. That's it. In order for it to kick over to 
digital currency. You need systems to fail simultaneously. And the people who are calling us conspiracy theorists or thinking too much into this, they're going to be the ones at work in the street while these things cut off on them. We all know electricity is measured in watts. In honor of James Watts is why we call it wattage. J.J. Watt, or Justin James Watt, left Texas for Arizona in days after Texas lost what? Power, electricity, watts. Freemasons and Jesuits and all the above look at you as zombies because they have formed society to not critically think and to only trust them, constantly making fun of you through these little rituals and weather manipulation. According to poweroutage.us, this is the top states affected by power outages or blackouts. New York is up there too with 2,000 reported incidents of blackouts. There are no coincidences. These are the same states that are reportedly unsafe in case of a zombie apocalypse. The reporter explained New York is practically a death trap. In the year where the movie Soyant Green takes place, where the food shortages is the most important part of that movie, the year is 2022. This movie was made in 1973. In 1973, they have been planning all of this. It really shouldn't surprise you because even the Bible has predicted the end from the beginning. But they have formed society to take the book of truth and turn it into man-made versions of religion. Did it? They had to make it everything about race, so everything has to be black and white. But in reality, those who have been following me for a while, those who are in the know, those who follow the word, that's where we all going to be. We're going to have our own little picnic in the backyard, having fun while everybody, like zombies, are running around trying to find out what to do. Our trust is not in this system. We who are awakened trust only but one, and that's the Heavenly Father. We are ready and prepared for this disaster, for this apocalypse. And it's going to be fun to watch on TV. And we're going to be laughing at those, or the Most High is going to be mocking those, as it's stated in Proverbs, that they didn't understand knowledge. They didn't want to understand or learn anything new. So they're going to fall with this system as it's been prophesied. Plain and simple.